Hello, welcome to the presentation about projectile motion. Uh, I'd like you to pause the video and have a little go at this warm-up question uh, and try and work out which picture you think is the odd one out. Okay, so if you've had a little think about that, you will have noticed maybe that these three, the, the uh, trebuchet, the uh, cannon, and the arrowheads, or the arrows, uh, are all objects that are accelerated for a short time maybe in the barrel of this gun or whilst this uh, thing is being accelerated in the uh, whatever you call this thing, the, the sack it's going to be uh, flung in uh, or this it's going to be accelerated, the, uh, the uh, arrows are accelerated whilst the bow is stretched uh, it's pushed for a short period of time and then it's released and no other force is acting on these objects apart from gravity pulling them down whereas with the rocket it's applying a force throughout the motion of its flight. Okay, so this leads us into a definition of what a projectile is. Okay, so a projectile is an, any object that is propelled through space by the exertion of a force which ceases after launch. So you kick the football, for a short period of time there's a force of your foot acting on the ball, and then the ball flies through space and there's only one force acting on it, and that's gravity pulling it down, and there's nothing else. Whereas the rocket is different. The rocket is being propelled throughout the motion of its flight, so there are more forces acting on it than just gravity. There's the force of the thrust as well. Okay, so this leads us to the presentation today, which is about projectile motion, and our aims today are to be able to break down the motion of a projectile into its vertical and horizontal components, and then to be able to calculate height and range of a projectile. If you haven't already seen the uh, previous video about projectiles, uh, it's well worth watching to get an insight into what we mean by components of uh, vertical and horizontal uh, velocity. Okay, so we're going to be using a simulation from PHET Colorado University, uh, which is a great uh, resource uh, from a university in America to uh, simulate and analyze some projectile motion. Okay, so this is the uh, simulation from PHET uh, Colorado University. Uh, now, with this simulation, you can fire projectiles uh, at any kind of uh, angle, height, whatever you like, okay? And you can experiment with it in all kinds of directions. You can change the initial velocities, the initial conditions, um, different speed. You can try with air resistance. You can try without air resistance try with different coefficients for air resistance, so the air resistance is stronger. Okay, right. So it's a really good, fun, uh, interesting way of playing with and learning about projectiles, and I definitely recommend you spend some time playing with it. Right, but for now, let's try setting up a situation. So I'm going to make the angle of the uh, cannon 60 degrees, set it to uh, 18 meters per second initial velocity, and I'm not going to be concentrating on air resistance because that's going to make things very complicated, um, and try firing the uh, cannon. Right. Now, as we said, we want to be able to know the height and range of the projectile. So I can measure the height which this thing achieved, if I'm careful. Okay, so the height this projectile reached was 12.4 meters. It's telling me here that the range, which is from here to here, it's telling me at the top that it's uh, 19, sorry, 29.3 meters, and that it took 3.3 seconds to complete this path. It's also telling me something else about the projectile where it's landed. It's telling me that it's landed 1.2 meters below where it was fired from. That's because the uh, cannonball starts 1.2 meters above the ground. Uh, you can just about see what I'm trying to measure. So it falls a little bit further than um, it goes up, if you know what I mean. It goes up by a certain distance, but then comes down a little bit further because uh, it starts off higher than the ground. All right, so now let's have a look at how we calculate these things, uh, how we calculate uh, the different components of the projectile's motion. Okay, so we've fired our projectile, and now we're going to do the calculations on it. Right, traditionally, or normally, you'd probably be asked to use 
these equations, the equations of motion, okay, uh, during these calculations. I'm going to purposely avoid using these and kind of derive them on the spot from the graphs because I think it gives you a better understanding of what's actually happening. Being forced to draw the graphs uh, of the vertical and horizontal components of uh, velocity uh, gives you a much better picture of what's actually happening. Right, so step one, let's look at the vertical and horizontal components of the projectile's initial velocity. So we're going to have to use a little bit of trigonometry. Here's a projectile. Um, we've got the angle from the ground and we've got its initial speed or the magnitude of its velocity. So when we combine the angle and the magnitude, we'll have a vector. Right, so if I do a little sketch, okay. Right, so the magnitude of this vector is 18 meters per second, okay? 18 meters per second. And it is 60 degrees from the ground, from the horizontal. This vector could be said to be made up of two other components, these two components being this vector and this vector, okay? This will be the horizontal component of the velocity, which will remain constant, and this will be the vertical component of the velocity, which will de uh, reduce at 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so let's just break it down into the two components. Right, I'm going to use a really slow method and, uh, of calculating uh, the magnitudes of these two uh, vectors. So I'm going to label my triangle. Uh, this, this arrow here is the same as this arrow here. I've just shifted it over so it looks like a triangle. Um, and I'm going to label my triangle. That's the opposite side of the triangle. This is the hypotenuse because it's the longest side, and this is the adjacent. And I want to find the size of that, so I'm going to be using the O, and I'm using the H. And I don't know if you remember, but this is how I was taught in maths. So, car, uh, toa. And since I'm using the opposite and the hypotenuse, and I have the angle opposite and hypotenuse, I'm going to be using sine. 60 is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, uh, which is going to be opposite over 18, which is hypotenuse. And I can rearrange it, multiply both sides by 18. 18 sine 60 will be equal to the magnitude of this arrow here. Okay, so uh, 60 sine multiplied by 18 gives me 15.58. I'm going to round it up to 15.6. Oops. So 15.6 meters per second. So the uh, vertical component of my velocity is 15 point six meters per second. Notice that I'm annotating the diagram as I go along. This helps me to keep things, keep my picture clear in my head of what's going on. Right, now I'm going to work out the vertical component. So, as well, I'm going to label that as, uh, sorry, I'm going to work out my horizontal. So easy to get confused. So this is my vertical component. And now let's look at the horizontal component. So. I'm going to do the same thing again. This time I want to find the adjacent side. I've got the hypotenuse and I've got the angle. A and H, A and H. So I'm going to use cos 60 is equal to A over H, A over H. Substitute the numbers into that. I don't know A, but I do know H is 18. Multiply both sides by 18. Cancels 18 on this side, so I've got 18 cos 60 is equal to uh, a, which will be my horizontal component of velocity. So, start again. So, I want to do 60, and I want the cosine of 60, so it's 0.5, multiplied by 18, gives me 9, 9 meters per second. So, the horizontal component of velocity is 9 meters per second. Okay, so I can now go ahead and use these calculations in the next part finding the maximum height achieved by the projectile. Okay, so for, from the previous part of the calculation, I found that the vertical component of the velocity initially was 15.6 uh, 
uh, meters per second. Uh, now I want to try and find the time to reach the maximum height so that I can find the maximum height achieved by the projectile. So it's going to help me to sketch a velocity time graph at this point of what would be happening in the vertical component only. Right, so as the projectile left, if you just like hold a ball in your hand and throw it up in the air, you have to think about what's happening to the velocity there. So if we have velocity and time, V and T, initially when the object leaves your hand, when the ball leaves your hand for instance, the velocity is going to be maximum and then it's going to reduce at a constant rate of 9.8 meters per second squared down until it's reached its maximum height which will be at this time here. Okay. Now I can stick some numbers onto this graph. I know that the great, well I know the maximum velocity is going to be 15.6. That's the initial velocity it left your hand at. Uh, I know the gradient of the graph is going to be 9.81. Um, and what I want to find is T. So, since the gradient of the graph, which would be uh, G would be equal to delta Y over delta X, okay, and I actually have the change in V, which would be delta Y, and I have G, I can substitute the numbers into this formula. I've got 9.81 is going to be equal to 15.6 divided by the change in uh, x, which will be the total time it took for this to happen, so it will be t. So I can simply rearrange t will be equal to um, 15.6 divided by 9.81. Uh, so 15.6 divided by 9.81. And I get 1.59 seconds. Okay, so that's the time achieved to reach the maximum height. So now I need to think about what the maximum height achieved is. So this is a velocity time graph. The area of this is the distance travelled. So the distance travelled until the ball's velocity reached zero is going to be the area of this triangle area of a triangle is just half base multiplied by height. This is of the triangle, so don't be confused by height of the projectile. Okay, so I just want the area of this triangle. The height of this triangle is 15.6, so uh, 15.6. The base of the triangle is the time I've just worked out, so it's 1.59 multiplied by a half. Okay, so 0.5 multiplied by 1.59 multiplied by 15.6 gives me 12.402 whatever, just leave it at this, meters. So that's my final answer for the height of the projectile. As you remember, that's actually the same as uh, what we got in the simulation, so I must be doing something right. Okay, so next step, we're going to look at uh, finding the maximum range of the projectile. Okay, so from the previous part of the calculation, just to remind myself, uh, the time was 1.59 seconds to reach maximum height. Okay, so the projectile went up. It took 1.59 seconds to get to its maximum height. Came back down again. Now to get to exactly the same place vertically where it was, that would take a further 1.59 seconds. The problem is our, our projectile was slightly above the ground by 1.2 meters. Okay, so it's going to have fell for a little bit longer time. So unfortunately, I can't just do to find the total air time. I can't just do 1.59 multiplied by two. This won't work. I'm going to have to do something a little bit more complicated. Now, as always in physics, making and drawing diagrams and annotating them really will help you understand what is going on. So I'm going to add as much information to this as I can. 12.4 meters up is how far it went. I know the vertical component of the velocity was 15.6 meters per second. Okay, do I know anything else? 1.2 meters. I do know the horizontal component as well. That was 9. So I know it was going this way at 9. Okay, meters per second. Since we're talking about velocity, 
I'm going to state from the beginning that I want up to be positive and coming down velocity to be negative. Right, so now I'm going to sketch a velocity time graph for the vertical component only of the velocity. Okay, so this is velocity, this is time, okay, I might try and make that a bit straighter. Um, okay, and I know that um, here's a, what you should be doing at this point. If you want to know the vertical velocity of the projectile, it's going to change just as an object would if you just threw it straight up and down, or just threw it straight up in the air. So if you hold a ball in your hand, or if you're sitting in the exam, don't be shy, get your pencil, and just throw it up in the air and watch its velocity. As it leaves your hand, it's going to be having, it's going to be maximum velocity, 15.6, okay, meters per second. So it'll be right up here, and then it's going to slow down, okay, from its maximum positive velocity down to zero. At this point, its velo vertical velocity is zero. Then it's going to start falling down, and its velocity is going to be counted negative because it's falling in the downward direction. Velocity is directional, it's a vector quantity. So it will continue down in a straight line. This should be a perfectly straight line. Okay, so now I should be able to substitute as much information on this graph as possible. Okay, I know this time was 1.59 seconds. Right, I know the gradient of this graph. It's 9.81. It's the acceleration due to gravity. I know the area of this part is 12.4. That's the distance travelled area of a distance time graph. I actually also know the area of this part because it's going to be the 12.4 plus the 1.2. It's the total distance travelled from the projectile going, well, in the vertical anyway, going from the top of its, um, the, the maximum height it attained down to where it started and that little bit extra when it hit the ground. So this will be 13.1.2 plus 12.4, 13.6. Okay, so I actually have quite a bit of information. Uh, and I think I've got enough to calculate the additional time it took to do this bit. Okay, so I'm going to call this additional time here. From there to there, I'm going to call it T. Okay, so I've got quite a bit of information. I've got the information 13.6, I've got gradient of the graph, and I want to find T. So I'm going to write uh, an equation for finding the area of the triangle. Half base multiplied by height will give me displacement S. Okay? That displacement will be the 13.6. The base is the time. And the height will be the velocity achieved on impact here. Okay? So, or this change in velocity, actually, maybe it would be better to say it's change in velocity. Okay. So, um, let's just try and write this in a way that makes a bit more sense. A half base is going to be time multiplied by the change in velocity will be equal to S. Now, I have a little problem because I actually don't have the change in velocity, but I do have the gradient of the graph. Okay. I can use the gradient of the graph to find the change in velocity. Okay, since uh, acceleration, just do it on the, uh, in, a, in a corner. Since acceleration is equal to delta v over t, then delta v is just going to be acceleration. I'll just use a now. Delta v will just be equal to acceleration multiplied by time. Okay, so I can substitute this for this. So where delta V is, I'm going to put AT. Half T multiplied by AT will be equal to S. So now, um, I'll just simplify it a bit. I'm going to have uh, T squared, AT squared over 2 half. That's, that's what's happened. Will be equal to S, the displacement. Okay. So since I want to find T, I want to find T, I'll rearrange for T. Multiply both sides by two to get the uh, get rid of the two on that side. So it'll be two times s the displacement uh, will be equal to at squared. 
um, divide both sides by A to get rid of the A. Okay, gives me uh, is equal to T squared. So two times displacement over A will be equal to T squared. Get rid of the the, the uh, squared by taking the root of both sides. Cancel, cancel. So this will just be equal to T. So I've got two times displacement over A, and the root of the whole thing will give me T. Right. So let's substitute the numbers I do have in. The root of two times uh, 13.6 divided by the acceleration 9.81 will give me um, will give me the time, the additional time it takes to fall this extra distance, or this extra distance, the area of the graph. Okay, so now the problem is I don't actually have square root on this, which I a bit of a <laughs> miss, uh, missed out on there. So I'll have to calculate it on my calculator off screen. So I'm just going to quickly do that now. 2 times 13.6 multiplied by 9.81. Let's go root of that. Gives me gives me 1.67 seconds. 1.67 seconds. Okay. So this t is 1.67. Right. So total time to fall is just 1.59 plus 1.69, so 1.59, whoops, 1.59 plus 1.69 gives me 3.28 seconds total. 3.28 seconds. That's the total air time. That's the time the, the thing was in the air for. Okay? Right, so let's just go back a little bit. Do you recognize this? Do you recognize it from the equations of motion? You should do. Half AT squared. That's straight out one of the equations of motion, okay? So uh, if you was maybe wanted to take a shortcut, just use the equations of motion. But it's worth understanding and seeing and doing it by the, this graphical method just because it, it gives you a deeper insight and understanding of what's happening in uh, projectile motion. All right, so now we get to the really easy bit, calculating the range or the distance traveled. So I'm just going to use the simple formula. Speed is equal to distance divided by time. Because I know the horizontal component of the uh, projectile's velocity, I can. Um, I've got this. I've got the uh, magnitude of it, nine, nine meters per second. I've got the time the thing was in the air for, so the time it had to travel. Uh, I can calculate distance. So distance is equal to. I'm getting a bit confused already. <laughs> Uh, distance is equal to speed times time. Speed times time. I've got the uh, the magnitude, 9 meters per second. I've got the time, 3.28. So 3.28 multiplied by 9 gives me 29.52 uh, meters. Okay, so that's my final answer. <coughs> Now it's slightly different from what was in the simulation. There's probably some rounding errors as, as I've gone through. Uh, I hope you found this useful. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to Kamal the Wafi. And if you have any comments or I've made a little mistake somewhere, which is quite possible, uh, please do point them out. And uh, any you know, constructive criticism is greatly welcome. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.